distinguished health ag committee, I appreciate the chance to be before you today. Today I bring you Senate Bill 155, which will bring consistency to the ag and vegetable seed regulation for the agricultural industry in Montana. Seeds are part of our business in agriculture uh, in Montana, and the reason vegetable is in there is because most of you have heard by now about the pulse crops, uh, canola, peas, and lentils. That's, that's why the vegetable is in there. Um, agriculture is the largest revenue generator in the state of Montana. Senate Bill 155 pertains to seeds, which directly generated approximately $2.8 billion of the $5 billion agricultural uh, revenue. And where that came from is if you take all, this, all the crops that are raised from a seed in Montana every year, 2015, those numbers regulated or came up to $2.8 billion. These products are regulated. Sometimes we don't like the regulations, but in, in, the United, in Montana, in the United States, we have the strongest regulation in the world, and that is through our EPA, our FDA, and what we call our uh, Federal Seed Act. These, these agencies look at all the crops that we raise, and they test them and, and find out how they can be uh, regulated and what they uh, do for the environment, what they do for the producer, etc. And then they come to Montana through these regulations, and the Montana Department of Ag takes over after that to make sure these regulations are enforced and they're workable for our state. Senate Bill 155 follows the present law that we have on fertilizer and is put consistency with the seed law that we have, and, and that's what Senate Bill 155 does. Most of you know I'm a very local government supporter. My only resistance to local government support is when it jeopardizes private property rights. That's why this bill is in front of you. This bill is to make it that local county governments and cities cannot regulate what a private property owner, be a farmer or a rancher that has seen some seed out there, cannot be regulated. Now, we're not just talking any seed, we're talking all seeds. We're talking organic, we're talking certified, we're talking registered, we're talking any seed that wants to be planted by the, the farmer. And that's a private property right. In Montana, most of you know, we, we continue to do a better job and raise more quality food per acre than many other parts of the world. Farmers develop these plans to plant these seeds on different acres in different years. This is called crop rotation. That's why different seeds are used throughout the cycle to, to make better production and take care of your soil and eliminate the monocultures that we've had in our state for many years. They're trying to improve the soil health and the production systems. This is a private property right. Senate Bill 155 is the heart of sustainable farming practices. Agri agriculture plants seeds in, in many different counties. If Representative O'Hare is planting in Shoto County, uh, he might go over to uh, Cascade County or up into Toole County. Uh, that's what we want to make sure that whatever he's doing under his management program can be done in multiple counties. And that's the, one of the reasons for bringing this bill. Uh, Senate Bill 55 allows consistency within the agricultural practices uh, of the farmers. Uh, Senate Bill 155 uh, makes a consistent regulation. Farmers own and lease many acres, multiple locations. This is a private property right to do what they see fit. So I ask for a due pass on 155. I'll be available to close and for questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. On the proponents. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Chelsea Cargill, here on behalf of the Montana Farm Bureau Federation today to offer our support for Senate Bill 155. Before I dive into that, I do have a couple other pieces of testimony to hand out, if I may, Mr. Chairman. The first comes from the Montana Agricultural Business Association. Um, they are upstairs in a Senate hearing, and so they asked me to offer uh, their support for this legislation as well and to hand out their testimony. And, Mr. Chairman, the second piece of testimony that I'd like to come hand out comes from um, Cindy Johnson, who is a farmer and former county commissioner for Ponderay County. And she was just unable to travel down today for, for the hearing and has asked that I distribute her testimony as well. So 
So in addition to the Montana Agribusiness Association, I have also been asked by the Montana Farmers Union and the Montana Association of Counties to offer their support for Senate Bill 155. At first and foremost, Senate Bill 155 maintains consistency in Montana's egg input laws for farmers and ranchers. It proactively prevents additional regulatory burden on Montana family farmers and ranchers, and it, <coughs> excuse me, on Montana family farms and ranches. As we know, it is not uncommon throughout our state for farms and ranches to operate on owned or leased land that crosses or spans multiple county lines. Agriculture is already one of the most heavily regulated industries out there, and the potential for additional burdens on a county-by-county -county basis makes it increasingly difficult for families to continue to thrive, for farm and ranch families to continue to thrive in Montana. Agriculture and rural Montana are the backbone of our state's economy. In Montana, we're home to over 29,000 farms and ranches, and agriculture is the number one economic driver in our state. Farmers in our state grow crops based upon a few key <coughs> principles. One of those is what market demand exists for that product, and secondly, what crops make the best use of their specific climate, soil condition, and other available natural resources. That results in a variety of cropping system and cultivation practices that farmers across the landscape in Montana implement. When it comes to regulatory authority, the sole focus should be on maintaining a level playing field, preventing unnecessary financial and regulatory burden, and allowing farmers and ranches to make the best market-driven business decisions they know how. Senate Bill 155 is a proactive, positive measure that protects property rights, provides consistency, and helps preserve and protect the egg industry in our state. This bill is about keeping those 29,000 farms and ranches on our landscape, maintaining a friendly and inviting business environment, and increasing the opportunity for other people to join them in that industry. So with that, we would offer our support for 155. We would ask for a due pass, and I would be available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. It's my pleasure to come before you today and express my support for Senate Bill 155. Just state your name. Please. My name is Jillian Street, S-T-R-E-I-T. I am a member of the Montana Farm Bureau, and I am proud to be married to a fourth-generation Montana farmer. He and I, along with his parents and our three adorable children, run our family <coughs> farm. I'm also blessed to be in partnership with my best friends and my husband on a joint farming venture, and we just started a brand new company in 2014 called Strix Egg. At that company, we are a commodity brokerage, a seed dealership, a brand new pulse processing facility, and a trucking company located in Chester, Montana. In a town of 850 people, we have provided 27 local jobs, of which we're very proud of. We currently own and lease land in three counties. We use conventional and organic means on these farms. Our commodities business moves conventional and organic products. Our crops consist of wheat, durum, peas, lentils, chickpeas, sunflower, safflower, and anything else that we can find that economically, agronomically, works in our rotations. Senate Bill 155 would protect our operations in many ways. We need the flexibility to make the best decisions based on our farms and our business needs. If a local government banned a particular practice, in order to help out another particular practice, that could be very detrimental to what we do. The fact is, we as farmers are outnumbered, and the understanding of agricultural practices and the products we create continues to fragment from the world that we are trying to feed. We have found success in our business through diversification. Our area of North Central Montana has long been known for its superior quality wheat products. But in recent years, our landscape in the Golden Triangle continues to diversify. Although most of our acres are still in wheat production, we have found that the fallow acres that used to lay with nothing in them, are, pulse crops, are a great alternative to not being able to produce anything in those lands. This has drastically changed the economic outcome for we as producers. Markets demand and stewardship of the land that we have inherited and plan on handing down to our children are the driving factors for the decisions we make 
to continue with our business. These very important decisions are the rights of the landowners, the farmers, the ranchers, and the business owners. Agriculture is the largest industry in our state, and we do it very well. I urge you to support your local farmer by supporting SB 155, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Are there other opponents or proponents? Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the House Ag Committee. I'm Don Steinmeiser, a farmer from Sydney, Montana, and I'd like to talk in favor of Senate Bill 155 this afternoon. Having consistent egg production laws in Montana is very important to many, <clears throat> many of us farm fields in more than one county. Having different rules in each county would make management a nightmare and add cost to the crops that we simply do not need nor can we afford. Being free to make cropping decisions on my farm that make economic sense is very important for the future of my farm and agriculture in Montana. Thank you. You're going to to give me some time. Other proponents. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Corey Anderson, A N D E R S O N. And I'm here on behalf of the Montana Stock Growers and the Montana Cattle Women. Today we stand in support of Senate Bill 155 for the reasons you've already heard, um, particularly the consistency this will provide for our members, because a lot of them are um, farming and ranching across boundaries of the counties. Um, so we think this is a great bill, and we do encourage it to pass on 155. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Tom Butcher, B-U-T-C-H-E-R. I'm a wheat, barley, cattle, and hay producer from Lewistown and currently serve as president of the Montana Grain Growers Association. <coughs> our rep our mem members represent 5.5 million acres of crop and grassland across the state of Montana, and I'm here representing <coughs> MGGA. I'm here today representing MGGA. The Montana Grain Growers Association urges you to support Senate Bill 155. This bill works to protect the personal property rights of agricultural producers by making everyone equal in, in the production of agricultural commodities in Montana. It preserves our right to perform the farming operations listed in this bill. We des desire for the Montana, state of Montana to oversee regulations on the agriculture seed production, thereby preventing a patchwork of local regulations that would create roadblocks for family farm businesses. It protects the private property rights of farmers to make smart decision, smart business decisions for their farming operations and their environment. Our Montana farmers need the flexibility to use the seed, fertility, and production tools that best suit their farms. Local regulations limit their ability to utilize the best, manage best management practice for their farming operations. In addition, Farmers and ranchers in Montana often own or lease land in multiple, multiple counties, being forced to comply with varying regulations across county lines, <coughs> cost prohibitive and burdensome. Opponents claim this bill would prevent local regulation of biotech wheat, but in fact, without this legislation, any production method, conventional, organic, or biotech could be prohibited in the county or a local area. Opponents also assert this bill threatens Montana's wheat exports. But in truth, agriculture is driven by market demand and farmers won't grow a crop they can't sell. County bans on the production of certain types of seeds in other states, Oregon, Cal Colorado, and California, for example, have led to lo costly litigation and created uncertainty in some cases, sign significant financial loss for farmers. Our focus is the operational aspect of this bill and need to help, need to keep agriculture producers growing and moving commodities in a safe and efficient manner while operating in a sustainable and profitable atmosphere here in Montana. Montana growers need the stability provided by this bill. MGGA supports Senate Bill 155 and requests your favorable consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Other proponents? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Wilson Elgin Fritz, last name I-L-G-E-N. F-R-I-T-Z, and I come before you today to represent the Montana Wool Growers Association. 
uh, not to belabor any of the points that have been made by uh, the proponents of the bill. Uh, Wool Growers Association uh, believes that this bill is uh, healthy for the agriculture industry in the state of Montana and urges it to pass. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Prokhoff. Chairman Redfield, members of the committee, for the record, my name is Arlene Rice, spelled R-I-C-E. I thank you, Senator Lang, for being um, proactive in bringing this bill before um, you to consi for consideration today. I think it's a, a great uh, bill that represents all farmers, not <coughs> conventional farmers, not just organic farmers, but all farmers. Um, what I do for a living, um, I have farmed for a long time. I'm a third generation Montana farmer. I'm a member of Montana Farm, um, or Grain Growers, excuse me. And I've been a crop consultant for, it'll be 30 years next year, and I will not tell you for how many years I've picked rock. But <laughs> I'm from Haver, Montana, and I've served as a crop consultant for a long time. And I work with all types of growers. Many of my growers, uh, farm part of their acres in organic production and also conventional production. My next door neighbor is an organic farmer. He grows rye. And if you are a wheat farmer, as I am, but we grow pulse crops as well, um, you will understand that rye is not a friend to wheat. Would I like to bring a, a, something to my county commissioners and say, Gee, would you outlaw rye in Hill County because it can be really disadvantaged for a wheat farmer? I would not do that because I, I rep respect his freedom to make those decisions on his farm. I think it's really important that we understand that this is not a thing against organic production. I see it as a win-win for both sides of production. Um, there are many um, communities that maybe the commissioners would not be as friendly to agriculture and not understand agriculture as well. And I could see something being done that could harm both sides of agriculture. So I think this is a very important bill to consider. It's um, something we want to be uh, active about and have it decided on the state level. We don't want one particular county. I um, personally, uh, consult in five different counties, and so I can't imagine if I would sell seed in a county and then be expected to um, know what county that was going to be going into, as well as how in the world would you regulate that? I, it, it just doesn't make any sense, and so I'm asking you to consider this bill because I think it makes good sense. It's a very proactive thing to do, and again, Senator Lang, I appreciate you so much for bringing this forward. I think it's a good thing to ensure all Montana farmers <laughs> that we have um, some freedoms. We all we all pay huge amounts of taxes, and it's hard enough to make it in our industry anyway. I just hope that you support us. Um, thank you for your time, and I'll be available for questions. Thank you. Other pro -cons? Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, Bob Hotchkiss from Shoto, owner and with my two sons of Hotchkiss Farms and Hotchkiss Seed. Uh, looking at it from a little different aspect, uh, there are several things on my mind. One is with uh, engineering and whatnot of different seeds, and with the many municipalities, I don't know how many there are in the, or in the state, you know, 56 counties, how is one going to police something that is forbidden in the next round or whatnot that might just be a little ways down the way. Uh, several instances of that is, uh, for instance, watermelon. And a lot of people like watermelon, I don't, but everybody thinks seedless watermelon is one of the greatest things going, you know, along with seedless grapes uh, or ever-bearing strawberries. What most people don't realize is that those are GMO products, and I believe that Part of this uh, opposition of this bill is to forbid GMOs going in the state. Um, the other thing is, as from a uh, seed company, that as you sell seed to some grower somewhere in the state, uh, 
uh, county, municipality, etc. cetera. Uh, I can see where this would turn into a black market situation. If someone orders seed uh, that is forbidden in that jurisdiction, and uh, but yet they want that seed in the worst way, and it goes through several, several avenues to get to him, how is that going to be placed? Uh, it's going to be quite a quagmire, I must say. Uh, so for these reasons, I would ask for your support for Senate Bill 155. Thank you. Thank you. Other proponents? Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Rhonda Hergenreiter, H-E-R-G-E-N-R-I-D-E-R. My family has been farming since 1800. 100 of those past years have been in the Clarks Fork Valley in south central Montana, a place known for its natural beauty and fertile farmland. In um, uh, the Clarks Fork Valley, we raise sugar beets, malt barley, corn, alfalfa, cattle, and hogs. As a farmer, I believe that Senate Bill 155 is a necessary component for helping us pass down our farms to future generations. Quite frankly, if we were no longer able to choose the seed that we wanted to, to use that we feel is the best for our operations, our farm, with its 216-year leg legacy, could cease to exist. And of course, it wouldn't just be our farm, but it would be lots of farms. Those that did manage to survive uh, would be less productive than what they were in the past. I can think of only a couple regulations that could negatively impact family farms as significantly as not being able to choose the seeds that we want. As farmers, we face many challenges every day. Weather, markets, high input costs, weeds, and pests. We need access to the best tools available. We do not tell a doctor that he can't use something that he feels is the best fit. Uh, for us to make us feel better, why should we treat farmers any differently? Farmers are constantly looking for ways to preserve the environment and natural resources for future generations. Senate Bill 155 is necessary to ensure that farmers can continue to have the freedom to be good stewards of the land. Thank you for your support of legislation that is good for both farmers and consumers. Thank you. Next proponent. Chairman Redfield, uh, members of the committee, my name is Jacob Baum, last name spelled B-A-U-M. Uh, appreciate your time today. I'm representing uh, two different uh, uh, people. One, one organization is the Montana Seed Trade Association. Uh, a mem uh, most Montana seed companies are, are part of this, most mom and pop shops around the state. And then also myself as a third generation farmer in Shadow County. <clears throat> I think from a, a seed standpoint, one, one thing I'd like to share with you guys on how it works in Montana as an industry, um, in case you don't know, is say, say 200 acres of seed production, the, the seeds that are harvested there could go to seed thousands of acres of production. So you need a limited amount to actually you know, get the seed, and then that seed will, will cover a, a whole bunch more acres. So one, one fear we have on the seed trade side of this is, is say in grass seed, we, we count on a very limited number of actual acres to raise the seed to give to farmers all around the state. So if that one, that one small area was impacted by a local government or county, uh, that would have a huge effect across the state because we're all getting the seed that is raised there to uh, put it around the state. So even though it seemed like a very small thing, it actually kind of has this tidal wave effect across the state. Uh, so an example is grass seed and, and potatoes in the Gallatin Valley. Most of the potatoes raised in the Gallatin Valley go to Idaho and, and seed most of Idaho. So you know, if, it, if that was limited and we lost that, we'd actually lose down the food chain a, a whole bunch more acres. And sometimes we feel on a local government might not see that big picture where if it comes to the state and is debated here, it'll get a little more attention and, and hopefully a, a better result for everybody will come out of it. Um, kind of the same thing, you know, a butterfly flaps its wings and uh, there's a hurricane down the line. 
we just, we just feel that sometimes these small decisions on a local level actually, we don't understand the impact down the line. So um, that's mostly what I'd like to share with you guys today, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.